Welcome to this course. My name is Stefan Buikens. I'm an architect from Belgium. And in this course, we will explain Grasshopper. Grasshopper is an add-on or plugin for Rhinoceros 3D, created by McNeil, the developer of Rhinoceros. It has been in test for a while, but is freely available. It uses the .NET libraries from Microsoft, so it is not compatible with the ongoing OS X ports of Rhino at this point. Current releases of Grasshopper are only available for Rhinoceros release 5 on Windows. With Grasshopper, the history features of Rhino are used. Initially, the geometry you create in Rhino is not dynamic, in a sense that as soon as a surface or curve is generated from other geometry, this origin is lost. Since version 4 of Rhino, you can turn on the history of object creation. But it is sometimes difficult to control and visualize. We give you a brief example. We create a control point curve in the top viewport. And just click some random points and close the curve. This curve is created directly in Rhino and we want to extrude it. But before we do that, we activate the record history option in Rhino. If we now activate an extrusion and extrude the curve, the extrusion itself is recorded. However, notice that the button itself is disabled immediately. If you modify the curve at a later point, you see that the extrusion follows the curve. The extrusion stays connected to the curve. Only because we activated the record history option. So even if we now, for instance, uh, create a mirror of the surface around a certain axis, and we still select the curve, make a change. In this case, the mirrored copy is not adapting. But if we would have activated the record history before we did the extrusion, like we will do now, activate mirror copy, select the object to mirror, define the axis. And if we now will modify the curve again, select the curve, activate the control points, change the curve, you see that the mirrored copy is adapted automatically. Initially, there was a plugin explicit history, which formed a kind of a user interface for this feature. And it evolved into a full programming environment inside Rhino. The name changed to Grasshopper. Uh, remember that each McNeil product has the name of an animal. At this point in time, Grasshopper is very popular in architectural offices, in schools, uh, in innovative practices, uh, with designers and artists worldwide. We have the main website of Rhinoceros, rhino3d.com, but there is also a specific website, grasshopper3d.com, for the algorithmic modeling plugin for Rhino. Here you can uh, re register yourself. There is a large community of users. Uh, there are different galleries with examples, for instance, several architectural projects where Grasshopper has been used. And this is a very good uh, example of the typical kind of geometry design that is possible with Grasshopper. Typically, the type of design that is quite complex to make and not that easy to adapt if we would use uh, traditional methods. Grasshopper itself can be downloaded for free, but of course you need Rhino. That can be a trial version uh, or it can be the full commercial or educational version of Rhino. Now, if Grasshopper is available, you can launch it uh, from the command prompt by typing grasshopper, and then you have a separate window that opens. Um, let's open... Let's open the model that is connected to it. I will give a brief example of an interactive parametric design created in grasshopper. So what you see here is a three-dimensional tower with three different sections and a certain twist in the facade. Now, Grasshopper itself, the window you see on the right, gives you a visual approach to programming, where you can adapt the design interactively 
at any point in time. So this is the end result of a design session with Rhino where we have different modules that perform certain operations. For instance, the rotation angle, which twists the uh, model around. So instead of writing code, you use the visual approach of Grasshopper, connecting objects, modules, which can be used to derive geometry, to create objects, to copy objects, to twist them around and to display them. This gives you a brief overview of what this course will cover. And this is an example we will build up from start to finish. So don't worry if you cannot really follow at this point in time. This is an end result of an extensive exercise.